All right, hi everyone. Looks like the rate of attendees has started to slow down. So um, we'll just go ahead and get kicked off. Um, my name is Nick Sanhinas. Uh, I'm one of the engineers with Perfecto, and today we're we're talking about our our reporting. So uh, before I before I get started, I just want to mention if you have questions throughout the webinar, feel free to type them in, um, and I will do my best to answer them during the presentation. And if for some reason we don't get to it, I will follow up with you afterwards um, to make sure you get an answer. So really the overview today, here, what we're doing, I'll give you an overview of what Perfecto is as a whole, as well as dive into a little bit of the, um, the, the analytics piece that we'll cover. Um, I'll show a live demo of our platform uh, for the analytics, and then I'll wrap up with some questions. So as we get started, I kind of wanted to talk about our unified solution, uh, or really just in general. Um, you know, we believe that in order to uh, really excel uh, in the continuous testing space, you need a unified solution, and, and that comes with a few components. So starting off, um, you need a solution that uh, that will help you include the creation, um, whether that's creating Appium Selenium scripts or um, writing, writing just uh, um, you know very simple click and record, um, you know from any type of authoring. You know you need something that will help you do that. Also, something that will help you execute at scale. Um, you know when you when you're doing continuous testing, we're talking about running tests all the time. Running at scale is is very important, as well as running the different frameworks that are needed at different stages. So typically we see uh, developers running Espresso and XUI tests really early in the process uh, versus more of a functional end-to-end -end test happening in more of a Selenium and Appium uh, framework. Uh, as well as uh, you know a lab, being able to have something that's up and running 24-7 to run this, this host of tests all the time. And then lastly, what we're talking about today is the analytics piece. You need uh, something to give you fast feedback uh, as to what issues there are, if any, as well as give you the root cause analysis of, of those. So I'll give you a, a high level overview here of what Perfecto offers. So here at the very bottom, what we're talking about is uh, we, we have a, a, a smart lab full of browsers and devices. And this lab can be elastic to meet whatever needs you're looking for, if that's to run 10,000, 100,000 tests a day, we can handle that, that type of volume. As well as something that's self-healing. If, if you're always having devices that are down, that doesn't really serve, serve to a, a, a high running continuous test practice. So, you need something that's going to fix itself and, and allow you to keep going. Uh, that's something that we offer. As well as, you know, we talked about this smart automation. So not just running your typical XUI, Espresso, Selenium, Appium. We do all those things. But also we've, we've developed a new solution that is actually uh, more machine learning in nature. And you're clicking record writing and it actually goes and is writing Selenium in the background so that you get all that same functionality with uh, a lower skill set. We've done other webinars there um, if you're interested in, in looking at that. And then finally today, we're talking about our smart reporting and analytics. Really, we're going to focus this in, and I'll click to the next slide here, focus on three things. So we're focusing on the CI pipeline integration component. So we'll integrate into your CI pipeline, and I'll show you what that looks like. As well as a more executive dashboard, uh, more heat map to give you an understanding of, you know, what's the what's the progress of this sprint of this release? You know, are you ready to deploy to production or not? Um, as well as our single test report, giving you all the detailed analysis that a, a, a tester or a developer needs to isolate an issue and, and resolve it. 
So before I go into that, I do want to talk a little bit about the machine learning components that we have. So first, you know, we talk about the traditional test analysis. So typically what you get with most solutions, um, or maybe you built it yourself, what you're typically getting is um, a test fails. Now you have to go look at, at that specific test and say, all right, what happened? Let me look at the laws. Maybe I'll look at the HTTP requests. Um, maybe I'm having some screenshots I'll look at and try to piece together a story of what failed. I'll reproduce it manually, all of those things. Um, now what we're talking about is, is a lot more machine learning. So using a lot of the same capabilities that, you know, for example, Google has out there um, to, to give a broader understanding of what happened with the test so we can go in and fix it. And so just to give you, I won't bore you with uh, all the slides here, um, but just uh, a high level overview of what this is talking about. Uh, you know, we have to train the data to understand, all right, is, you know, this is what Google does with their photos. Uh, you know, here's what a cat looks like, here's what a horse looks like, here's what a car looks like, so on and so forth. And then when you put a picture out there, a word out there, it knows what picture to relate back to that word. So here's an example, um, you know, Google Photos, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this. I type in the word coffee and it's gonna show me all the pictures in my album that have coffee in some form or another. So obviously this took some training on Google's part to train the words of the picture and so on. Perfecto actually does the same thing with failures of your test. So whether this failure is the app crashed, maybe a keyboard was popping over the, the input element or some other pop-up, right? All of these things, we've un we understand kind of what they look like on the device or what they look like in the logs and help you get a high level understanding of what failed. And here's kind of the list of the things that, that we've identified. Obviously, you could also add more and train the, the, the AI component to learn your specific failure, something that's meaningful to your organization. And here's kind of what that looks like. So these two devices in the right-hand corner are what happens when the app crashes. Or we see down here in the middle with the keyboard popping over a field that was expected or some other pop-ups, right? So very easy to understand. Sometimes it's just based off of a, a screenshot, an image that we're analyzing. Sometimes it could be, you know, in terms of element not found, that could be something from, um, you know, a log, right? And, and the ultimate goal of this, um, you know, with some, some keyboard or some pop-ups, is to help eliminate the noise or, to let you understand, uh, because actually what we found out working with some of our customers is if you can isolate and resolve the top five issues, high level issues that are in your suite, you'll actually resolve 80% of the failures in your suite, thus leading to a more stable automation suite and, and, and just, you know, more trust in, uh, from, you know, from really the whole organization in, in this uh, continuous test process. And here's a, an example of specifically what that looks like. You'll see there uh, the, the pop-up little flag there labeling this test as it failed because of a pop-up. And we can get into a little bit more of the specifics here. At a, at a very high level, first I wanna talk about uh, kind of the heat map. So this is, this is what it looks like. It's a fully dynamic, uh, viewpoint. This is more set as a, an executive dashboard. So I can understand from a very high level, you know, what's going on in my suite. I can see, for example, in the, uh, the windows portion of the, you know, my tests are doing really good. I've got a lot of passes. If I'm looking at my galaxy S nine and S nine plus, uh, you know, we've got some problems. So this could indicate maybe a device specific issue. Um, you know, the, the latest version of Android is having some problems and I got some failures. Or it could be, you know, these tests are all failing and we've got a problem with our app. Obviously I can filter out if I want just 
pull out the red or, um, you know, pull out the green or anywhere in between if we had some of those. This gives you just a, a good high level understanding from an executive viewpoint of what's going on. And this data is fully dynamic. So if I want to go out, let's say even further, I'll back up there. There we go. And we see a whole lot more um, input here as well. So then I could filter on just the 50-50s, right, or pull those in. So this gives you a good high-level understanding of, of kind of what's the status of your, of your suite, of your test. <clears throat> now, what this also lets me do is I can dive in to a specific test or a specific suite of tests. And of course, we talked about some of the AI element here. This is telling me that the failure here was an element wasn't found. And then I can dive in one level deeper and of course see the stack trace. I can see the video. So this would be the, the full execution, video execution. I can also see download if I need to the device log. Can also do the device vitals, um, the HTTP archive file, which um, is typically for a developer. It tells you all the all the gets and posts that were made, all the, the networking that happened behind the scenes, so that you know specifically what service may or may not have failed, um, as well as video. So all this is downloadable. That's one question that uh, I typically get. So. If this is a a system, uh, you know, you're using Jira, you're using ALM, you don't have to use this system. Uh, you know, we, we're proud of it. We think it, it looks really nice. But if you're used to a, a system, it's very easy. It's fully RESTful service. So we can port all this information into whatever platform you're, you're comfortable with you're using today. And then I'll go over here. Um, so we talked about a, a dashboard view as well. So uh, I'm sorry, yeah, CI dashboard. So we have two different components of the CI dashboard, and this really helps you, um, especially as you're getting into higher levels of continuous test. So first, I have all the different jobs that are run, and I can also see, here's a good example. Um, you know, we were running a bunch of tests, and it went from taking 17 minutes to now 38 minutes. So almost double the execution time and, you know, a quick little spike there. That could be that, you know, over 200 tests, um, maybe maybe just uh, a couple services were running slow and, and took double the time to, to load. And that could easily cause that spike. Um, something that may be harder to, to notice from a Jenkins job point of view, but very easy to notice in this viewpoint, telling you, you know, maybe you've got a service slow to respond, maybe you know, you've got a memory leak, something's going on there. Uh, this helps you kind of isolate those those issues. Um, not only from a, a job point of view do we give you this information, but also from a a by a branch. So in this case, I can. I can expand this out. So I've got a couple branches here, and this would really allow a developer to get this kind of insight uh, if they're running you know, pre-commit or, or on a merge, you know, whatever, whatever process you guys are following. This allows you to really understand what are you doing at a, at a developer level, the code that you just checked in, how, how did it do versus maybe the code that 10 developers checked in um, so this this helps you on a branch level understand specifically what happened. All right, so we covered the the dashboard heat map. I will go a little bit into this because um, I know I probably have some questions. Let's look here. Um, so obviously, I'm able to filter only by 
say the failed. And if I see my failed, you see I have these high level issues kind of packaged here. So then I can filter only by the pop up, for example, or only by the element not found. Or in this case, uh, blocked. All right, so these are all valid reasons, or I can just see all of them. Not only can I filter in that way, but also, so this, this reporting library, I can group, say, by device model. So now I'm seeing all the tests, all the different devices that I ran on, and then all the tests that ran under that specific device, for example. This really just helps you, the, I mean, the, the main goal here of the, the analytics and reporting is to give you a high level understanding from the heat map, you know, executive viewpoint, down to a um, really helping you crunch numbers. So in this case, there's only 25 tests represented here, but in some cases when there's tens or hundreds of thousands of test cases you're having to, to look through and sort, this can be, I've had I've had customers I've worked with where where this was a full time job for three four people and it took them a week. Um, this could be something that that could easily be done in you know in, in that case in a couple hours. So being able to crunch this this data really get meaningful understanding of what failed what passed and and know where to go from there it is really the goal here. So this uh, this sort feature really helps you to do that. All right. So let's see. I got a couple questions here. All right. So how far back in time can the analysis go to show historical? Uh, so yes, this uh, right now and kind of as a default, what Perfecto offers is the Actually, let me just go into a report, and it can probably be a little bit easier to show. So the things like the stack trace, the screenshots, um, the steps, if you've, you know, if you've listed them, all those are available forever. When you get into the video, the video is really the heavy part of um, – we're holding that right now for 45 days. Now, if you do have an instance where you need that held for longer, uh, you know, we're happy to have that discussion. Um, you know, I've got other customers that need this for, you know, 90 days. That's that's not a problem. So it's really just a quick setting. Um, but all the typical data will keep forever. The video is the, the heavy part, which we'll, we'll keep for less time. All right, so does the CI dashboard work if the tests also run through Jenkins? Yes. So let me... Let me go here, and this is kind of an important uh, thing to understand. So Perfecto integrates with your tests at the test level, um, or it, sorry, rather from the framework level. So the integration into Jenkins or Team City or Bamboo, really any any CI dashboard, um, we, we'll integrate with and show this data because we're integrating with your your Frame, you know, with you at a framework level. So, um, you know, really just adding some capabilities to provide a job name, job number, and then of course after that you can sort by job name and all those things um, in this in this model. But um, yeah, we're able to to run through Jenkins, run through locally, um, any anything. Let's. See other questions. Yeah. So, can you show some of the uncategorized failures to give an idea of how they can be analyzed? Great question. So, let's go here, and I'll just minimize this. All right, so in this case, we had some failures, and maybe we don't know what was wrong with it. So the, the AI may not know what was wrong, so I can analyze, let's say, the log here. 
error performing single click at coordinates. And then we can also play the video. And see what's going on here. And one thing to keep in mind, this is a, this is an espresso test that is running. All right, so in this case, it looks like there was a pop-up. And that's why it wasn't able to click on. So um, in this case, and, and this is obviously the more you add, the more you, you know, the, the better the, the machine learning gets. But in this case, there's a pop-up issue. So let's look for pop-up handling. Yes. So now this uh, has a failure reason of pop-up handling. Great question. Let's see what else we have here. Are screenshots provided at point of failure? So yes, um, for in this sample, uh, XCUI and Espresso, it is, you know, we're, we're acting as a runner. So if you have screenshots set up to take on failure in your framework, then we'll show them here and it looks like this one did not. But if I go back, let's just look at, that one. Give me just a minute. Oh, here we should be good. Okay. So in this case, this was a, an Appium Selenium test with Cucumber. So, you know, all, all these tests, we are taking screenshots. Looks like my hotspot's having a hard time pulling back some of the data. I'll find you another example here. Yeah, I apologize. I'm on a, a little bit of a laggy internet. Um, so it's, uh, but yeah, we, we do provide the screenshots and all this thing. Let's see here, other questions. So if I run 200 tests, can we name them as some name as the job number uh, on the heat map? Let's see. So I think I understand. So yeah, let's uh, first I want to show you this. So with every test run, you're able to add a, a number of tags. So in this case, there was a management ID that was auto added um, some espresso name tags and different branch names. So as you run a specific job, you can just pass in a, a tag parameter and it would add it to whatever other tags you have, whether that's, uh, you know, your, your cucumber tags or, or whatever, whatever tags you're adding throughout the test. And then I'm able to, whether it's, Let's say from here, I just want to see all the reports that were run with that tag or with this tag, right? And so I can pull every test that has that. And then I could also, if I want to filter, add a filter group tag. I didn't see it. Or hear this job. So then I can pull a specific job. That's not pulling me any data. Um, but yeah, I can I can filter by a job. I can filter by uh, just a specific device.
for whatever reason the devices it gives me are not ones I have data on. But yeah, I'm, I'm able to, to do all that type of filtering. And let's see here. Well, it looks like we're just about to run out of time. So if there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, you know, just, just shoot them in real quick and then I'll, I'm happy to follow up. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you everybody for the time and have a good afternoon.